We know from the United Nations World Environment Day programme for 2019 that 90% of the world's population breathe unsafe air. We also know that 7 million people die each year due to air quality related illnesses and diseases. So in this video we've got an opportunity to hear the best practice from the United Nations campaign and from the UK's Clean Air Day 2019. So let's take a look. My name is Andrew Marlowe and welcome to this second EMS Mastery video to celebrate the United Nations World Environment Day 2019 with its special theme of beat air pollution. And also this video is to celebrate Clean Air Day which is being celebrated on the 20th of June 2019. This video will look at the opportunities that we have to reduce air pollution from activities in and around our homes. So stay tuned and there'll be some great tips that you'll be able to implement both now and in the future. If you had a chance to catch up with the first video in this series, we talked very much about what is air pollution and some of the chemistry behind it. So maybe just to recap on some of those issues, let's take a look at what happens when we burn uh, fuels in our home. So if we take a substance X and burn it in the presence of oxygen in the air, then we will get an oxide. In this case, if we burn a carbon-based fuel like natural gas, or if we burn coal, then we will generate carbon dioxide, or in the absence of sufficient oxygen in the air, carbon monoxide. If we also have other impurities like nitrogen or sulfur present in the fuels, then that will also cause uh, nitrous oxides or NOx, or sulfur dioxide or SOx to be produced. And these materials, these gases have a health effect both in the house and in a wider uh, environment. When looking at opportunities to reduce air pollution from our household activities, we should first look at the direct opportunities to reduce uh, our burden on the environment. So when we look around our house, we might see that we have cookers or hobs that use natural gas which contains methane. We might have boilers that also use natural gas to produce our central heating and hot water. And finally we might also have an open fire burning coal or wood to bring warmth to a particular room in the house. And as a consequence the gases and uh, pollutants from that fire will be discharged through the chimney. It's interesting to note that uh, many of you may have already uh, had your boilers serviced in order to make sure that they're operating at the maximum efficiency. If you haven't then here's a, here's a tip that will help uh, save you money on your gas bills but also reduce air pollution and that is the opportunity to uh, have a test carried out by a gas safe engineer who can analyse the composition of your uh, gas, of the air in which the gas burns and the efficiency rates. And this is an opportunity to make sure that the gas that you do use is being used most efficiently and is causing the least amount of air pollution. Another opportunity to reduce our direct air pollution effects onto the environment is to look at the household or personal car that we might use for commuting to work or for family purposes. And whether the car is fuelled by diesel or petrol, the chemistry lesson that we had earlier still applies. By burning the fuel, we're producing carbon dioxide and sulphur oxides and nitrogen oxides. So we're having very direct effect on the environment through the use of our, our cars. So there is an opportunity to be able to reduce our dependency on our personal or household cars 
by substituting those journeys with a short walk to the shops if it's a, a local journey or by using public transport like buses or trains. And the Clean Air campaign have produced a very simple travel hierarchy flowchart that enables uh, the best decision to be made based on the journey that you need to undertake. So further information is over here on screen and available at the Clean Air Day website. And we shouldn't forget that the opportunities to reduce air pollution from our household activities are not solely confined to the combustion of natural gas in our cookers or our central heating system or the fuels that we use in our motor vehicles. An example of one of these direct air pollutants is the solvents that are contained in high gloss paints. These solvents, called volatile organic compounds, help us to give a very clean and shiny finish to the paintwork, but are also evaporated in the drying process. And many of you will probably remember that when you've completed uh, painting with gloss paints, there's a very strong, acrid solvent smell and that we always open the windows to discharge that smell. Well, these volatile organic compounds can travel to the atmosphere and together with other compounds can cause enhanced air pollution incidents. So every time that we turn on the light switch or we use our electrical devices at home, we're consuming a small amount of electricity that has been generated from the power plant that could be 100 miles away, but nonetheless has consumed gas or coal or other fuels in order to generate that electricity. And consequently, our use of that electricity has caused a small amount of air pollution to be generated. So anything that we can do to turn off unwanted devices to turn off the lights when we don't need them, to switch off our television from standby. All of these activities have an opportunity to reduce the amount of electricity that's generated from the power stations and so therefore reduce our burden of air pollutants in the environment. Finally, an indirect opportunity that I want to highlight is the kind of travel choices that we make when we want to go on holiday. Let's not forget that when we get on that cruise liner or when we get on that aeroplane to go to far-flung places to enjoy a holiday, we're causing an element of that flight or that cruise to generate air pollution. So we should think very carefully about the journeys that we want to go on and the opportunities to help minimise the air pollution caused by our holidays. So we've looked at our very direct and indirect activities that can cause air pollution from our household activities. Now we should look at maybe some future opportunities to reduce the air pollution burden from our households. One opportunity is to consider fitting solar panels to your house. So there's an opportunity to generate electricity from sunlight which at the point of generation doesn't have any air pollutant issues. Equally, if it's not possible to uh, afford or install solar panels, there's an opportunity to make wise choices in the fuels that we use. So for example, when choosing an electricity supplier, we might want to choose one that has 100% green electricity. So that would be electricity generated from wind farms or solar farms. And this will ensure that the electricity that we use is not causing the air pollution from the combustion of fuels at a power station. I hope that this video has given a very clear explanation of the direct and indirect effects that we can have on the generation of air pollutants and on the quality of the air that we breathe. Each of us have a very clear opportunity to be able to reduce the air pollution that we cause from our household activities. So a little bit later before the end of this video, 
there's some action points that you might want to consider to make some very real and direct savings on air pollution. I hope that you will have an opportunity to be able to celebrate World Environment Day 2019 on the 5th of June this year and also Clean Air Day on the 20th of June and that each of us in our own way can make a small saving on the environmental burden that we cause by the air pollution that arises from our household.